All right, happy Saturday afternoon, everybody, and happy we Easter weekend, everybody, as well. Hope you're having a great time. Welcome to Diamond Talk, presented by Thacker Jewelry. All the cool love stories begin with Thacker Jewelry in Lubbock, West Texas Legends. We're going to recap Texas Tech baseball against UCF over the weekend. Tech salvages a win out of the Series 3-2 today. We'll take a 30,000-foot look at the program. What needs to change for this team to make the NCAA tournament right now? All of that coming to you from the Arctic Air Studios tonight. If your air is not Arctic this spring and summer, you need to call the bear, callthebear.com. And, of course, all communications, whether you're on YouTube or X or maybe on, I don't know, Facebook or whatever it is, you get to us thanks to United Supermarkets and Market Street. There's probably one near where you live, great supporters of Texas Tech. United Supermarkets, and apparel on the show provided for by the great people at Boot City, one money-saving mile outside the West Loop on 19th Street. If you're into great Western wear, high-quality Western wear, if you maybe dig some of the shirts we wear, hi there, how you doing? It's Boot City that you need to be talking to. All right, tell Cody we said, hey, when you get out there, we'll let a few more folks get in. We're going to look at a lot of Texas Tech baseball today, maybe even have some uncomfortable conversations for some folks so we're glad you join us whether you're on twitter whether you're a part of the youtube family uh, and whether you're on facebook all you got to do let us know you're out there let us know the audio is good the video is good we're off and rolling see craig right there he knows the drill indeed craig the talking box is on mm, tasty everybody ready for tomorrow you guys going traditional ham non-traditional Steaks, fajitas, I don't know, Domino's Pizza. What are you guys doing? Hopefully everybody's got a chance to be home. That's what I like, you know, the way they do the schedule for a baseball. They did it in the old Big 12 and Southwest Conference, made sure everybody was home on Easter Sunday and nobody had to be on the road or playing games. Now well, let's get it going. In three, in two. Good afternoon, West Texans. All you good, fine, friendly folks out there who wish you were. I'm Ryan Hyatt, theraiderland.com. Everything we do archived there. You should start your day there during the week. We serve up Raiderland hot links every day. Cool stuff we find on the internet. We think you'll like. Hat tip uh, Joe Kinsey there at outkick.com, who really has taken that uh, screen caps idea to the next level. We're talking baseball presented by Thacker Jewelry in here in West Texas. And we're looking at a Texas Tech 3 2 win today at UCF. Mac Hewer, the young guy out on the mound, as Larry Hayes used to say, he gave you a lot of courage today. And we, we were thinking that uh, it would be maybe a four- or five-inning deal for Hewer, and then you'd see some of the other arms come in, uh, ham and egg it, a little do shedder type stuff. But he pitched so well, he pitched it deep into the game. And uh, he gave the uh, bullpen a chance to be really effective. They were in Texas Tech on the weekend. And I, I kept seeing people griping about Matt Gardner, the Tech pitching coach and Tech pitching, and I'm like, he gave up. What was it? One, seven. He gave up nine runs over the weekend in a Big Twelve series. That's enough to win more than one game, and we'll get to that because we're gonna we're gonna look big picture and we're gonna look small over the weekend series and everything else. Allen, Ten Commandments tonight, six p.m. I'm ready. Which, by the way, one of the greatest soundtracks. Get the soundtrack to the Ten Commandments. It's it's it's, it's must. You know, it was must viewing for my family growing up. You know, now nobody's here. Everybody's gone. But anyway, yeah, great, great show. And they make it stretch out from like 6 o'clock until 1030 or whatever. Really good. Uh, Craig talking about traditional ham. Fried ca fried cabbage. Uh, mashed taters, obviously. Banana pudding for dessert. I got a friend, Old Dog Trey. Uh, that dude, he makes the best banana pudding. Uh, I got an aunt, uh, you know, on one side of the family and she makes incredible banana pudding, but old dog Trey, here's to Trey. Single guy. He had to have some skills and that was one of them. He could show up with a banana pudding and anything. Yeah. Well, uh, traditional ham ain't nothing wrong with that. So, uh, Texas tech wins today. And they get it done with a couple of big bombs. Uh, you get, uh, what was it, Maxie and uh, Cash today going deep. You had a huge run late on the sacrifice fly. I believe that was Stripling. And 
you put up just enough to win after you give up a uh, leadoff bomb in the ninth to cut it back to one run, you get the 3-2 win. And if, if you look over the weekend, game by game, 5-4 on Friday, on, pardon me, on, on Thursday night, we started this weekend series a little bit early, uh, you lead into the ninth. And that you, you know, you were feeling pretty good until you weren't feeling pretty good. And all of a sudden this team had lost another Big 12 game. You started the weekend with an RPI of 71. It ballooned up to where today you started at uh, 82. That's not in the NCAA tournament. Now, getting a win against UCF, who had a very good mathematical RPI formulation, top 10 going into the series. And let's just take a peek. You're 82 today to start it. UCF with the wins. Although UCF is going, man, we're playing tech. They're killing us in the RPI. So you just got to win today over the number five RPI team in the country. UCF, mathematically, again, as we go into April, it's we still got a lot of time, but we don't have as much time. They had uh, overall strength of schedule, five. RPI, five. Non-conference strength of schedule, one. RPI, one. Non-conference strength of schedule. They were 12-2 and two going into this game at home. So, by any estimation today, one, you just needed to win a game to avoid getting swept. Two, you needed to win a game against, this is the highest RPI team you could get a win against in the Big 12. So as we kind of morph and go through the weekend and what we liked and what we didn't like, um, we'll, we'll discuss that more. Um, I thought the pitching overall, for the most part, the weekend gave you every chance to win a game. You can say the meltdown in the ninth, obviously not optimal, but, you know, you got to score some runs. Kyle Robinson uh, pitched his gut out. Max Hewer today was – fantastic wouldn't anything wrong with that and even if we go back uh on thursday don't want that i want visitor stats hold on sorry and you go back and look at the pitching you know free not bad four innings two runs earned rogers getting you there bridges faced one batter and then Sanders going two and two-thirds. And, of course, he can't close it out. A guy who's been pretty good for you this year. That's not horrible pitching. Did you close it out? No, you didn't close it out. Then yesterday, I thought Robinson gives you everything you need. You just don't score any runs. Today, you get more quality pitching. You get just enough runs. Uh, Jared, uh, you win two or three at home, take at least one on the road. That's a non-football guy talking. Thank you. Football guy wears us out. Uh, I feel like Tech is on the fringe of being really, really good. I don't know if they're going to be really, really good this year, but I disagree with the people that are saying they're really, really bad. They're just really, really not doing the things you got to do to win, which gets us to situational hitting, runners in scoring position, moving runners around, Stretching out innings. We um, we, we utilize, uh, there's a, a Pythag theorem. Bill James started it um, that is applied to baseball. And you can look at expected wins based on what you do and do not do in a game. And it's, it's really hard to explain without the mathematics in front of you. But it, it, think, of, think about it in sequencing, that you're going to have, all, all of the same events in one inning, but if they occur in a different sequence, you don't get it. You can have walk, 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 home run, four runs, three strikeouts, and you get four runs out of the inning. You can have home run, walk, 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 three strikeouts, you got one run out of the inning. So this team has been on the wrong side of that for the most part this year when it comes to offense. We saw it early on today, I think in the second, maybe in the first, but definitely in the second and third. If you had a runner, you, you couldn't do anything. I think it was the second inning, maybe. Second or third, where you, you get a couple on and you get three strikeouts. That if you sequence that out different, you're putting up runs. But it's always easy to look at the pitching. And I get 
the fans that rail against Matt Gardner and say, well, the pitching's been bad, this or that. The pitching has not been that bad this year. The hitting has been horrible. A team average on the road, about 230. People asking, you know, why was Gavin Cash not in the lineup yesterday? Gavin Cash ain't hit a lick, particularly on the road. In conference play, this is some of the lowest averages we've seen since 2014, 2015, when they were when, when the dead ball, dead bat era was going on in college baseball. It's easy to get frustrated with pitching because it glares. But it's it's the hitting for this team right now. That's what's holding it back. And people say, well, Tim Tadlock needs to try something different. Have you seen how many different lineups they've tried? Have you seen who they've moved up in the order, down in the order? Bravo goes from bottom down to top, hitting second, doing different things. Five hits on uh, Thursday. Uh, didn't get anything done the last two days. Not picking up. I mean, he's having a great year. It's not like they haven't tried to do something. It's not like they haven't moved people around. It's not like they haven't put young guys in. They've got as many. I want to see the young guys. If the old guys aren't, there aren't a whole lot of old guys on this team for you to sit there and say, you know, put them in there or take them out. You have what you have. Uh, let's see, Jared, today, uh, at one point, you guys can get in on the uh, communication, whether you're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, doesn't matter. United Supermarkets taking care of you. Fire away the comments. Let's talk tech baseball. Uh, at one point today, you had a freshman pitching freshman at first and second. They'll come around. Well, yeah, they all come around, but that's the problem with college athletics. You don't, you don't have time for them to be, you know, four and five year veterans. You got to come around in April, in May. Chris, hitting and fielding has been worse than pitching this year. Yeah, the fielding has been bad. They turned a nifty double play this uh, this afternoon, though. That was good to see. Or what was that, the six? Can't remember which inning. Uh, Jerry, it's easy to win. Football guy over if the team is playing a fun brand of baseball. Sometimes they are emotionally hard to watch. What's Who's the emotional leader? Great question. Jared, cheers to you. Because you get into an area which is always dangerous to try to diagnose a clubhouse or an inside without totally being on the inside. But I feel pretty confident after 35 years of covering Texas Tech baseball. That's right. I announced my first Texas Tech baseball game in the spring of 1989 with Brian Gordon, the great Gordo. See, I've been there uh, a little bit. I, I've watched a few good teams, bad teams, been on the inside of a lot of different things. I, I think I have a pretty good feeling for different things. Agree or disagree. I'm just telling you why I'm saying this. This team doesn't belong to anybody. As I look on the outside, but have different people that I visit with, that I trust, in other places, this team doesn't belong to anybody. Uh Again, with a lot of young players, what, T.J. Poppy is going to walk in and make it his team? Yeah, that, that rarely happens. You know, some of the older guys don't play a whole lot. Hard to make it your team. Some people are just not wired that way. Two examples. Jace Young was a real talkative, real kind of rah-rah guy, whatever you want to call it. He'd get in, He'd get in your face and he'd tell you. Here's what we're going to do today. Josh Young, completely the opposite way. He just did it by playing hard and, and, and watch me, guys. And you watch Josh Young, you went, holy crap, we got to play. It's hard for pitchers to do it. I've seen great pitcher leaders over the years. One of the greatest was Shane Wright from 97 to 99. We talk about him quite a bit because I think he's one of the greatest pitchers to ever wear the Texas Tech uniform for many different reasons. One, he was a good pitcher. Two, he was a good guy the ultimate competitor. But it's hard for pitchers to do that if you don't have something kind of surrounding you. Like Kyle Robinson could be an example of a guy who maybe could do that, but he's only showing up once a week. And I don't mean that in a negative, but he only plays once a week. This team doesn't really have the feel that it belongs to anybody. Maybe Kevin, maybe Bazell can become that guy in April and May now that he's back out there and healthy. He is, to me, the most complete player that Tech has, the best hitter. Uh, he's a professional. He's a pro guy right now playing college baseball. 
that maybe Bazell is able to do that. But some teams, you wait for a long time for them to show what their character is, to develop the characteristics of a team. By the way, welcome to the 30,000-foot view of Tech Baseball. If you want to get into the intricacies of any of the games, decisions this weekend, moments, we can do that. I have no problem doing that. But we're going big picture here because as we go into April, the big picture is you're out of the NCAA tournament right now. You have plenty of chances to work your way back in. But right now, you're not a tournament team. So maybe, maybe Bazell is able to take over this team going forwards. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Jared, uh, uh, Young, Gutierrez, McMillan, a few emotional leaders thought of from the past. Yeah. Those were guys uh, that uh, were different, different style leadership, different style, uh, different individuals, obviously. Every individual leads in a different way. There's no cookie cutter way to do it. And when I say this, I'm not saying that you got a bunch of bad guys on the team or a bunch of guys that don't care or whatever. That's totally different. But as I watch this team kind of meander through March for many different reasons, that's what strikes me. This team doesn't belong to anybody yet. Somebody's going to have to make this team belong to them. And they've got all of April to do it. You've got tremendous opportunities. And you would go, yeah, Stanford coming in. That'll be great. Stanford's going to kill your RPI. Here you go, football guy. Let's go look for that Stanford RPI. How how are how the Stanford Cardinal doing? Not Cardinals. Because you're uh, finishing the day at 81 if you're Texas Tech. By the way, there's uh, Arizona State. Great program. Uh, 85 RPI. Grand Canyon. What are you doing out there, 92? Uh, we look. Washington State. Santa Clara. Yeah, we're still looking... We're looking at Moorhead State. Surely they hadn't fallen this far down at this point, have they? No, there's, there we go. Stanford. 10 and 13. <laughs> they don't have a win against top 25. They're 1 and 4 against top 50. 0-1 oh, after that. They've lost three games this year to teams that are outside the top 200. Their RPI is 182. So basically, you're playing the equivalent of Longwood, Winthrop, Canisius. Uh, they're worse than Baylor. Baylor, by the way, is killing you. Those things are killing you right now. So let's and I only throw that out just to because football guy. That's for football guy. Yeah, Stanford obviously sucks. No, Stanford's a great program, an elite program in college baseball, having a bad year. Right now, Texas Tech can be two things, an elite program having a bad year by Tech standards. Both of those things can be true. Yeah, you, you can't lose against Stanford. You got to beat those people. You got to beat them Monday, Tuesday. Sometimes people have a hard time holding two differing thoughts to be true in their mind, even though they're not that different. It can be both true that Tech is an elite baseball program, and they are, and that they're having a bad year right now by Texas Tech standards. You can get your questions in, thanks to United Supermarkets. Whether you're on uh, YouTube, whether you're on Twitter X, or on Facebook, we'd love to hear from you. Yo, Michael! Yo, yo. Yo, Adrian. Yo, I was thinking, Adrian, maybe, you know, we could get together and uh, go watch a baseball game or something. I don't know. You know, you've got gaps. I got gaps. They hit to the gap. You run to the gap. Yeah, I've got two turtles. Cough and the link. Get it? Get it? Cough and the link. Uh, Jerry, I wish Tech still had natural grass, would accidentally leave the sprinklers on until Stanford. Sorry, we're washed out. RPI for the win. Seriously, that you're almost looking at Stanford going, uh, we don't want to play you. Which teams have been manipulating the RPI by doing that the last couple of years by canceling games. Uh, now I think you're the other way. You go, hey, we, we got to play Stanford. We got to get some wins right now, you know. Uh, Chris, still think Tech is better than UCF. I'm not being a smart ape. Do you think 
Tech is better than UCF, or you ask me if I think Duke. All I know is I saw a 5-4 game, a 2-1 game, and a 3-2 game. So there's obviously a huge gap between the two teams uh, that one team won two games and one team won one game. Massive gap in those two UCF wins compared to the win by Texas Tech. Do I think Tech is better than UCF? I'll say this. I think Texas Tech talent-wise is as good or better than UCF. I don't think that Texas Tech talent-wise right now is maximizing what they're doing. We talked about sequencing earlier. We talked about the PTAG uh, stat, uh, and maybe you got in a little late. So do I think Tech is better than UCF? I don't think they're worse than them. Sure don't think they're worse than them. As we continue the look from above, uh, isn't there still a ban on California teams playing Texas due to COVID? No. Uh, Reaching for anything here to keep Stanford from getting on the plane. No, get them on the plane. Bring them out. Let's beat them. You owe them. Texas Tech can't beat Stanford enough over the years for me to be a happy man. I could be 114 years old on my deathbed, and if Tech's still playing Stanford, I want them to beat them for 1995. You owe them for 1995. Pay them back for 1995. Every time you get a chance to pay them back, for 1995, you do it. So you go for the wins. And this is something we kind of touched on earlier this week, I think on one of the daily broadcasts, the vagaries of college baseball scheduling, uh, a little bit like basketball has become, but baseball has always been this way to a point. Now it's even harder that you try to put together a schedule and you think these teams are going to be good or they're not going to be horrible. And then they turn out to not be good. Like you would think every year you schedule Stanford, you go out there, and you play them at their place, and they're coming back to your place, this is going to be great. It's going to be awesome. And it's a home and home. These no, it, And now here they are at 182. The easy thing is to blame the transfer portal. That's not the whole thing in baseball. Uh, I mean, it's it's been around. Baseball movement's been around for 40 years in college baseball that way. But you look at the Tech non-conference schedule, and that's where you're getting killed. Your non-conference strength of schedule ended up being 192. Now, you went 14 and 2, and that's fine. Your non-conference RPI, 35. But that just killed you. And it and it's about to, that 192 is about to go to 202 or 215, probably, depending on what happens. But you've done fine against the uh top 100 and one to 200 teams, uh, top 200 teams, you got you know, far too many wins against them, actually. Uh, you got 15 wins and three losses. You don't have a horrible loss. You have three bad losses in the 101 to 200 category. Hi there, Baylor. Thank you for that. Um, but the, the scheduling this year, the mathematics, all of that comes into play. And that's why, from a certain standpoint, on the RPI, you can't blame Tim Tadlock. You can't blame Texas Tech. They went out and scheduled some teams that typically are not great. Gardner-Webb's not going to be great. They're kind of going to be what they were. Texas Southern is usually better from an RPI standpoint. And you can't get teams to come to Lubbock hardly now. Thank you, Stanford, for doing it. But on the midweeks, you're subjected to playing New Mexico State, New Mexico, unless you want to add another 500000 uh, to a $1 million dollars on what you're doing with uh, paying teams to come in and play. And even then, they won't play. Uh, yeah, that's right. The, the dogs didn't bark. I don't know how that happened. That's amazing. Uh, the Baylor series is the big black eye. Yeah, no two ways about it. That you just, you know, you look at that series. And, again, we go back, and it wasn't necessarily pitching. It was hitting. You couldn't get anything going offensively. That if at the end of the year you don't make the NCAA tournament, and we got a long way to go before then. That's going to be one of the first things you look at and go, yeah. Uh, Molina and White have been clutch for number one hogs. Why did they leave? Uh, White wanted to catch every day, and he's not as good as Kevin Bazell behind the plate. So he pretty much wanted to catch. Uh, Molina, on the other hand, there are those who will tell you that he's not exactly thrilled uh, with the situation. I don't know that to be true or otherwise. But uh, Molina went ahead and left because his guy left. That's pretty much it. Occam's razor. Yeah, Hudson White left because he wasn't he wasn't going to catch. He was going to have to move positions, and uh, he didn't want to do that. So 
good on him. Of course, Texas Tech and Arkansas see each other on the 16th and 17th of April coming up. Uh, let's see. Which series left on the schedule are you most wanting Tech to win? Uh, significant sports day for TCU. I, I don't really break it down that way, Jared. I just go win games. I don't really, there's nothing out there that I go, oh man, this will make me feel better as a human being. My life will be better. Everything will be better if we do that. And it's not out there. Sports broadcast says yes. I have no idea what that means. But I'm glad you said yes instead of no. So we go back again, and you guys keep firing your questions, comments, and everything else. And thanks to United Supermarkets, Market Street, hopefully one near where you live, on Diamond Talk, presented by Thacker Jewelry here in Lubbock, Texas. Joe Thacker, West Texas legend, creative mind, baseball fan. So let's 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 let's, let's go with what needs to change. Well, first off, what needs to change are some things that aren't going to change. For everybody, you know, sitting there saying, well. You know, Texas Tech needs to bunt more, or Texas Tech needs to play more small ball. That's not going to happen. That's not what this roster is constructed to do. That's not who these players are. And if that's what you want, then you don't want Tim Tadlock. And that's fine. We can have that conversation. If that's if you're to that point, you know that Texas Tech became so elite and just a Omaha program every year thanks to Tim Tadlock, but you don't like that anymore because that's what got you to Omaha was Tim Tadlock philosophy. That's fine. That's not going to happen. This team has just got to, they got to hit better. They got to drive in runners when they got them in scoring position. They got to be more clutch. You have a lineup. I'm not going to say everybody, and I'm not going to even say who I think is one of the biggest contributors to this, but I believe that there are some players in the lineup that are more concerned about where they hit in the lineup than how they hit in the lineup. That apparently they didn't get the memo when coming to Texas Tech that Tim Tadlock will move you around. That you don't start off with day one and the lineup is one through nine. It doesn't change. That there will be change. And I see the, I see tech fans. You got to try something different. I wrote this down all the stuff off Twitter. This isn't working. You got to try something different. My God, nobody tries something different more than Tim Tadlock. He's more willing to adjust on the fly with a lineup than almost any college manager I've seen over the years. Good teams, great teams, and everything in between. No no spot is sacred. Nothing is guaranteed. No spot. You got to do it. So you got to get some guys that are just flat out. You got to hit better. Now, then there are those who say, oh, what needs to change? Well, this obviously the pitching's not working. Okay, that's fine. Pitching's not working. You got to change pitching coaches. This Matt Gardner, we've been trying to get rid of him for years. We haven't even been to Omaha, you know, since 2019. We might have gone in 20, but who cares? Doesn't matter. And you only, you know, you're only playing Florida off their feet, looking really good in a regional last year that you just weren't good enough to win. Well, it's got to be the way. It's got to be that Matt Gardner guy. You know, here's the deal. Do you think Matt Gardner does anything that Tim Tadlock doesn't want? Think about that for just a second. Yeah, Chris, pitching has been pretty good. It's been more than good enough. It was good enough to win three games this weekend. Do you think that Matt Gardner rolls out of bed every day and says, I'm running this freaking show? I don't care what Tim Tadlock thinks. This is how we're going to handle pitchers. This is how we're going to develop them. This is how we're going to utilize them. Now, if you think that, then we can get to the idea of then, okay, then Tim Tadlock obviously is an idiot and he has a guy who's not doing what he wants. Matt Gardner does everything Tim Tadlock wants done with pitching. From how they are structured, utilized, they overprotect arms compared to a lot of programs, much to the chagrin, I think, of some Texas Tech fans sometimes. But they will overprotect arms. 
And that's one reason why you've got some pretty good pitchers to come to Texas Tech over the last decade. Hi there, Clayton Beater. Looking good. Shutout appearance in the major leagues yesterday for the Yankees. But let's just go down that road and go, okay. Tim Tadlock just wakes up one day and says, this Matt Gardner guy, God, he sucks. What was I thinking for a decade? Do you do you think that the next guy is not going to do what Tim Tadlock wants? So what you really say when you when you say you want Matt Gardner fired, and that's fine, you can say this, it's okay. Just be man enough to say, I want to change Tim Tadlock. I don't like Tim Tadlock's philosophy as a college baseball manager. I don't like how he handles pitchers. I don't like how he runs his program. Just be man enough to say, don't, don't say fire Matt Gardner. Don't say fire J-Bob. Don't say fire Goot. Say, I don't like the philosophy of Tim Tadlock. I want to play more small ball. Say it. Say it out loud and say, I want to fire Tim Tadlock. Now, I'll disagree with you, but I'll have more respect for you if you sack up and come in and say that. I think you're wrong. I think you're dead wrong. Completely wrong. But I'd have more respect for that than the people that him and haw around the edges because that implies that you think Tim Tandlock doesn't have a philosophy that is executed by Matt Gardner by Gutierrez, by j Bomb, by Ray Hayward, and that what they do is somehow out of line with what he thinks. Now, if you think he's wrong, because, I mean, the success that Texas Tech had in going to Omaha and playing deep and winning championships before Tadlock was so vast, I understand it. I get it, you know, totally get it. Will I give Tim Tadlock more slack than any coach not named Kitley at Texas Tech? Yes, I will. 100%. He's got the skins on the wall. The philosophy is sound. The overall program is fine. Are they playing great baseball right now? No, they're not. Do I believe they'll play great baseball in the future? Yes, I do. Will they do it with Tim Tadlock? Yes, I believe they will. Will he make changes? I don't know. I don't get the feeling that Tim Tadlock feels like he needs to make those changes. Well, they got him now. They got to try something different. This isn't working. We hadn't even been to Omaha in five years. Okay. All right. That's fine. You can sit here and say, hi, it just, he is co-opted and he's complacent. That this is good enough. That's fine. Okay. That's cool. I don't care what you think about how I view it, but I want you to at least think about it rationally. If you're capable of doing that. Some people aren't capable. Football guy is not capable. Baseball is really hard for most people, most fans. College baseball is even harder because it's not in the day-to-day. -day. It's a day here, then three, then a day here, then three. That it gets exacerbated. Even college baseball is even harder than just regular baseball to handle on a daily basis. And I know some people get mad with, well, a football guy, and he says, I don't give a shit. I don't care what you think about that. I really don't. Uh, Chris, those critics don't remember the Dan Spencer years. We couldn't even make the Big 12 tournament. Yeah, eh, Some do. Some do. But, you know, you're just not striving for excellence. Eh, fine, whatever. Making excuses for the program. Yep, sure am. They drop off bags of money for me every Monday for me to do these shows. They come out here in the country, and they drop off sacks of money for me every Monday to do these shows. I do these. I, I do this to give you my honest opinion after being around college baseball at a high level for 35 years. I announced games Tim Tadlock played in. Good Lord, how old am I? I should really look into that. So I don't think anybody should be happy with where this season is right now. I'm not, if I were a fan, I, I wouldn't be. But I think you can still be happy with where the program is and the program you have. And go, hey, it's baseball. Let's call me back in a couple of weeks. It may be worse. 
it could get worse. You could lose two games Monday and Tuesday to a just a Drex Stanford team. It could get worse, or you could win a few games. I don't know. It's baseball. That's why I like it. Swallow baseball. And we'll see what it looks like in two weeks and then in four weeks. And then you'll wrap up the C. You'll go to the Big 12 tournament. You'll probably need to win a couple of games in the Big 12 tournament this year to try to help the RPI. And I think this team will probably still make the NCAA tournament. And then you go see what happens. And maybe some guys round into form on the mound. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I just find it laughable, some of the reactions, though, that we get. And, and, and the people that say, try something different. Nobody tries more different than Tim Tadlock. And again, I understand that the people who don't follow it every single day, game by game, anybody, I get, I can understand that. That's what you got to do. That's why I'm here for you. I'm helping you out. Dan Spencer. You know, I really thought Dan was going to be, I mean, we can, we got a few more minutes here before we get out of here. Yeah, I really thought Dan was going to work out. Uh, he was right before me at Texas Tech. Uh, the well-documented uh, fight there at uh, J-Pats and people getting thrown off the team. I was not there. That was a little bit before me. Now, was I told that I couldn't come into J-Pats at one point in my life? Yes. And I'm not going to name any of the names of the people I was with that night. Yeah, there was a time when I could go to J So that made me almost as good as a future tech coach. I really thought Spencer was going to work out. The vagaries of coaching hires. And he... They had talent. They just didn't maximize it during that time frame. Now, one thing they weren't is athletic, and that was the first thing that Tim Tadlock did, is he came in and he changed the athleticism. And that's why you see guys like Pompey out there, one of the top national recruits in all of, all of college baseball, top 100 guy, as good as it gets middle infielder, still a young guy. You know, the, he, he immediately changed the physicality of tech baseball. He understood that, which is funny because he's not a big guy. He couldn't play. Tim Tadlock couldn't play for Tim Tadlock. Tim Tadlock, you know, was just a short little middle infielder who liked to reenact uh, WWE, WWF uh, fights and uh, get in trouble in hotel rooms. Just saying. I have no knowledge of that whatsoever. All right, last chance. If you've got questions, comments, fire them away. Thanks to United Supermarkets. Here on Diamond Talk, brought to you by Thacker Jewelry. Obviously not open, but they'll be ready for you on Monday. It's about that time, guys. Are you uh, doing engagement ring shopping? You have no idea what you're doing. Zero idea, young guys. Go to Thacker, talk to them. Kind of get an idea. And even if you just want to sneak your bride to be in there and say, hey, honey, why don't you help me out here and write down a few ideas? They will absolutely help you. Now, guys who've been married a while, who still want to stay married, you might want to go in there and look at crafting something unique, something individual for you and your wife. Something that's never been done. They can do that. That's how good Joe Thacker is. All right. It's almost time to watch Ten Commandments. Maybe have some pizza tonight. Don't know if we can get Domino's out here tonight, but we'll do what we can. I've enjoyed the conversation, as always. You know, enjoy it. Love talking baseball. I'll talk baseball anytime. In fact, we'll be back with you Monday. Uh, we will have our five things we know on Sunday column coming up in the morning, theraiderland.com. So do not miss that. In the meantime, we thank everybody for being out there. we got to shut it down. It's been fun, productive. I think we all feel better now. Everything is good. And I can't think of a better way to say it, Chris, than indeed, his God is God, as Ramses kind of figured it out. Happy Easter to you, Chris. We appreciate it. Happy Easter uh, to everybody. A glorious Sunday coming. Hope you guys uh, enjoy everything about it. If you got little ones, don't hide the eggs too, too much that they can't find them because nothing worse than going out there sometime in May or June and finding that egg that, well, you guys get the idea. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Five things we know on a Sunday.